Hello and welcome disruptors. Welcome to another episode of Mindset Mastery Moments with Dr. Elisa White, your number one mindset disruptor. Because guess what? Your mindset is the key to your success in your life, in your career, in your business, and in everything you do and everything that you're going to level up in and achieve. Hey, this is all about an audio only moment to help you enhance your daily routines by providing new perspectives, encouraging your personal and professional growth, and pushing you beyond your comfort zone for optimum success. So let's dive right in today's episode. In the fast paced world of business and leadership, love and life negativity can act like a silent anchor weighing down our ambitions and stifling our potential have you found yourself trapped in negative thoughts unable to break free well my dear it is a universal experience the pressure to stay positive can be intense and the repercussions of dwelling on negativity are far-reaching to the point where the argument and the battle continues where a phrase was coined toxic positivity (laughs) from decreased productivity to strained relationships the impact of negativity is still very profound my dear but fear not in this episode we're not just discussing the woes of negativity i am going to offer you tangible strategies to flip the script and turn the tide so let's embark on a journey to reclaim your mental space and transform those moments of negativity into a catalyst of positive change we will be right back after a word from our sponsors Welcome back to another empowering episode of Mindset Mastery Moments, where we tackle the challenges that hinder personal and professional growth and our overall success. I'm your host, Dr. Elisa White, your number one mindset disruptor. And today we are delving into a topic that resonates with all of us. I call it Flip the Script. And today we're learning the art of transforming negativity into positivity. Negative thoughts are inevitable. They're just part of the human experience, much like the ebb and flow of tides. A study by the American Psychology Association found that 77% of the people in the USA experience physical symptoms caused by stress. Oh, and often fueled by negative thoughts. You know, it's very crucial that we acknowledge that those moments are not just setbacks but they're actual opportunities for growth. They are truly opportunities for growth. So let's stop the stressing altogether. Today, I am giving you my top seven strategies for cultivating positivity in the way you think. I am literally asking you to flip the script of the words and the screenplay in your mind and in your thoughts. So let's just jump in here. Let's go with number one. I call it the process where we acknowledge. We just acknowledge the negative thoughts for what they are. I want to remind you, I live by a mantra that says, I am not my thoughts. I am the observer of the thoughts in my head. You know, we often see the image of someone having a battle with themselves. And we have an image of a person sitting and on their shoulder, left and right, on the right is an angel or God sometimes. And on the left is a demon or a devil. Our thoughts are not us. Our thoughts are thoughts. We are the observer of these thoughts. And many times I believe that that imagery is literally where there are things, thoughts happening, the devil and God or devil and angel. And the person in the middle, that's you. So you don't have to 
own them, just acknowledge them is what I'm suggesting in my first tip. Consider negative thoughts as passing clouds. Just as clouds don't define the sky, negative thoughts don't define you. Avoid beating yourself up because your experience is less than positive or you even experience a less than positive thought or idea. I want you to consider those thoughts of being an unavoidable part of your life and that you can easily deal with them if you acknowledge them first. You see, life isn't perfect for anyone. There's a mixture of good and not so good moments. I want you to challenge yourself to change your negative thinking into a more positive flow of energy. So acknowledge them, but don't take them on as you and move forward into number two. And this is where I want you to think of your mind as a garden. You decide where the seeds nurture. You acknowledge that your thoughts are within your control. They are not yours, but you get to control them. Because remember, you are the CPU, the central processing system, the CPS in this case, the central processing unit. You, that's you. So I want you to take ownership of your thoughts. That's what you're doing in number two. We're taking ownership of our thoughts. Research from the University of Melbourne suggests that individuals who actively control their thoughts exhibit high levels of psychological well-being. So you, you, you are just going to be the observer, but you're the one who controls and regulates the thoughts that are in your head. So think of yourself, put yourself and know that as a gardener of your mind, you get to control and nurture the seeds that grow in your thoughts and in your mind and in the setting of your mind. That's why we talk about mindset so much. Number three, I want you to silence negativity. Imagine negativity as radio frequency. Refrain from broadcasting it to those around you until you found a clear signal. So, when you get when we think of silence and negativity, I want you to think of the like a radio playing where you can just turn it down. That television is too loud. Turn it down. I want you to make a commitment to keep the negativity to yourself. Don't play it over and over. And that's where you limit the source of being a, 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 what people call a negative. I Well, I guess I made it up a negative Nancy. And you're always just calling up someone and going on and on. A survey by Gallup found that teams with positive communication outperform their counterparts by 20%. So if you are feeding the people and circumstances around you with positivity, by turning down the waves of negativity, by silencing it, so it, it, it you hear it and you observe it and it stays there, guess what? You're committing to keeping yourself in a positive zone. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to make a commitment to keep negativity to yourself. Now that you've given up your given now that you've given yourself the permission to confront those negative thoughts, promise yourself that you refrain from verbally sharing it with anyone around you. And so that is sometimes when you say, "Oh, I caught myself going in." I caught myself flashing out. So really catch yourself, silence it, and move on. We will continue with our other four steps, but not before a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are flipping your mood. We are flipping the script. We are flipping our thoughts of negative thoughts, understanding that is just a natural part of life. And that number one, we are the observer. Our thoughts are having a life of their own, but we are in control of those. And so the fourth point that we are doing is we're flipping our mood. We're literally getting a mental grasp on our negative thoughts. You may be familiar with the, the expression that's used, turn that frown upside down, which means to smile and avoid dwelling on your troubles. And people, this is why people say, oh, she's just so positive. And they are starting to call it positive, to toxic positivity. Well, it literally works because statistics prove that positive emotions broaden their thought and action. 
and it puts in 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 it put, becomes the catalyst for contributing increased creativity and problem solving. Yes, Barbara Fredrickson, a researcher, said that positive emotions broaden our thought actions and the repetitive nature of contributing to increase creativity and problem solving. So if you are a person that is in it, I don't care what you do, whether you're building skyscrapers, you're constructing tables and chairs, or you're working in a classroom, or you're running a Fortune 500 company, or you are an entrepreneur, a hustlepreneur, a workingpreneur, whatever you do, really and truly turn in a frown upside down and smiling and avoiding dwelling on your troubles can actually contribute to increased levels of creativity and problem solving. You see, I want you to think of your mood like a ship. You are the you are the pilot. You can redirect the course of that ship at any given time. Visualize turning the ship towards a brighter horizon. Like if you know a storm is coming, if you were the 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 person that is even just supporting and having conversation, you would make sure that that ship does not just go wherever and goes into a storm. You're going to tilt and go and redirect the course of that ship to ensure that it's going to a safer and brighter horizon. You can also flip your mood from dark to bright. Think of it as flipping your cognitive switch like a light switch. You have the power to flip your disposition. So in flipping the script, number four is to flip your mood. Number five, this one is going to take a little bit more. So I want you to lean in for a minute. Tie a positive connection to negative situation. Number five is tie a positive connection to a negative situation. Dr. Elisa, what are you talking about? I want you to think of your mind as a canvas. Paint positive strokes over negative thoughts, literally. Because think about it. If your child has just <laughs> got your wall and scratched everywhere with some black crayon, you don't just wipe it and then those little marks are left behind. You actually paint over it. So I want you to use your brush strokes, your, your, your brush strokes and paint your negative thoughts with positivity. Jot down positive aspects of anything that might be a challenge in our so-called negative situation. So here's what we're going to do. One of the things I do, I do it both. I have a notepad at my bedside for my reflection in the evening, but I love my digital notepad on my iPhone. I want you to keep a record when you experience a negative thought about a person or a situation, whether it's an ongoing or just incidental, if you're really wanting, if you find yourself in a negative ditch all the time about your life, I want you to jot down something positive about it. Yes, you can literally find a positive in a negative, but you have to be looking for it. In this case, we are looking for the positive and the negative. It's called positive connection to negative situation. For example, Let's say you're you're excited to eat breakfast at your favorite restaurant. I have. <laughs> it's not my favorite restaurant. I'm not the biggest breakfast person. But a lot of times if I'm traveling and I have to go, I'm like, where's that? Give, give me a nice pack. So you're going to IHOP, but you end up with the slowest waitress in the <laughs> at that IHOP. You find yourself feeling so annoyed and you start to think, why? Are they so slow? Why in earth is she moving so slow? This waitress is running, just, just, she's just running like a chicken with her head cut off, but she's not really accomplishing anything. And she's kind of ruining my breakfast. I want you to recognize your negative thought about the waitress and to flip that, flip the script and flip your mindset and focus on the positive aspect of your breakfast experience. For example, when the food did come, I want you to readily acknowledge and possibly, if you can, follow this. 
right down. When my food arrived, though, the pancakes were hot and fluffy, and they were full of pecans, and the coffee was great, and I enjoyed it. When you jot down the positive, you can read them later as an exercise to sharpen your disposition in a constructive way. You know, I talk about my principle, my system that's called think, speak, do, become. The one thing that's threaded in between all of those are feelings. And what, we're going to have an episode soon about my principle and how feelings is just the, the, like the, 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 the blood that flows through the stream of my system. You see, when you tie a positive connection to a negative situation, you are literally flipping the script. You get in the habit of doing those throughout the day or at the end of the day, whatever works better for you. You are programming yourself to find the good. And believe me, there are a limit, limitless amount of good in your world. I'm not just saying in the world, in your world. Even situation by situation. Number six, I want you to embrace a mantra. Whatever that looks like for you. I bought into the one that says, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. In tough situations, try to recite your own mantra that might be simple to mine over and over again. You'll soon see, you'll soon become ready to move on with your day without getting and getting stuck on little things. Things. Your mind is like a garden, as I shared earlier. Plant seeds of positivity with this mantra. Whether that looks like some people call it affirmations, but literally don't sweat the small stuff. And listen, my friend, based on what day it is, I don't sweat nothing at all. And anyone who tries to get me to sweat anything, I got to keep away from you. Because right now I am not doing small. I'm not doing I'm not sweating anything, not even the big, the small, anything that is without my control and I can't contain, I let it be. Just as plants need nurturing, repeat your mantra for your own personal growth. Mantras can be like something that helps you to reduce stress. Uh, statistics show that mantras can really help you. Don't sweat the small stuff. Turn that smile up front, upside down. Statistics show that mantras have been linked to reduce stress level and increased focus. As found in a study that was put up by the National uh, International Journal for Yoga. Now, literally, you can throughout your day spend time <sighs> taking deep breaths, holding your hands, your legs, standing, stretching your hands up in the air and surrender, whatever that looks like for you. Holding a yoga pose if 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 you know one, if you don't know one, learn one and repeat your mantra. Don't sweat the small stuff, whatever that looks like, so that you can plant a seed of positivity in your day. Number seven, I want you to maintain future focus. Stay with a future focused perspective. I want you to picture negative thoughts as a fog and look ahead to see the clearing of this fog because it's just the fog. Envision positive future experiences to dispel the darkness. And we're going to have an episode on visualization, but this is where the power of visualization exists. If, if the negative thoughts is a fog, that means it's just there momentarily. Fogs clear up, right? Fogs clear up. And so when you look ahead, you're envisioning that fog clearing. And what is it going to look like when this is not in the space? While I encourage you to enjoy presence, visualization is to pull towards the reality that you create for yourself. I believe that life is not what it is. Life is what you create it to be. So maybe you'll discover you are full of negative thoughts each morning. If so, I encourage you to allow yourself to look two or three hours into the future at least once you get through traffic <laughs> once you're sitting at your desk once you open up that cup of coffee you know think about the productive day at work that is followed by dinner with an old friend like what does it look like or maybe you're making your favorite pot of soup it's you know it's winter coming you're making a favorite pot of chili be future keep a future focused perspective at the beginning of your day because negativity is just a fog. When you can imagine and focus on good things that are yet to come, a positive light 
my dear friend, will shine through and it will eliminate the darkest moments that are brought by negativity. Statistics also show that was in the research journal for positive psychology, which I absolutely love and subscribe to, highlights that our that our future oriented mindset contributes to increased optimism, which leads to increased joy, which leads to increased productivity, which leads to increased success, our chances of achieving the goal that we set. My friends, those are the seven, but guess what? I have one bonus from you, but right after we hear a word from our sponsors, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We have been flipping the script from negative to positive. And the last one I want to give you, you know that this is so important in everything that you do is to celebrate progress. Your journey is not a sprint. It is a marathon. I want you to celebrate each mile that you cover on the journey of flipping from negative to positive. I want you to acknowledge and reward each of your efforts in maintaining that positive mindset that is optimum for your success. Once you've experienced your power over disposition, acknowledge every effort. You can even reward yourself for motivation to maintain the positivity that we are working on from numbers one through seven. You see, statistics show in the American Psychology Association that rewarding yourself increases motivation and reinforces positive behavior. So if you truly want to flip the script, if you can stop and say, here are the things that I've actually accomplished in my journey to flipping out of the funk of negativity into positivity, you are more likely to reinforce those behaviors in yourself. And if you're a parent, I encourage you to, in your own way, take V7 or one by one, teach it and work with your students. Like I said, Mindset Mastery, Move, Mindset Mastery Moments is a movement and we got some exciting information coming about that. I want you to start working now to successfully deflate your negative thinking, change your disposition, and adopt a more positive perspective with experience. You'll see that life is so much sweeter, sweet life when you identify positives and learn to flip it in the side steps of negativity. Flip it. Every time negativity comes up, flip the script. Flip the script. Flip the script. <laughs> My dear friend, thank you so much to, for listening to a matter impactful, mind-shifting moment with yours truly, Dr. Lisa White. As we navigate the art of transforming negativity into positivity, remember that the journey is as important as the destination, process over product. I encourage you to connect with me on all social media platforms and stay stay tuned for how you can be a part of the exciting community that we're building globally for Mindset Mastery. So let's collectively harness the power of positivity from sustained personal and professional growth, which ultimately will help us to be the most high achieving successful individuals that we are. I am Dr. Elisa White. Your journey to positive and empowered life continues on our next episode. Thank you for listening. And remember that everything begins with a thought. How you think is what you speak. What you speak is what you do. And what you do repeatedly becomes habits, which ultimately impacts what you become and the success that you will have in your life. I am going to remind you to live passionately on purpose, with purpose. I'll see you next time on the next episode of Mindset Mastery Moments with yours truly, Dr. Lisa. I'm signing off. Bye now.